Okay. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I truly, truly apologize for the delay and for the technical errors. Um, I wish um, I was the late, great Steve Jobs. I probably wouldn't know what the problem would be and we would be in heaven or someplace great. So, right, this is the Community PSA, uh, the first inaugural one of 2021. It is so good to be here um, with you all. Um, if you're seeing this, this is a recording we were unable to go live on Facebook. Again, technical difficulties, but we still want to definitely go through with the community PSA. We have some amazing guests on. We want to make sure that they are able to, uh, you know, meet the people, reach the people, uh, the viewers, all those who, um, you know, watched the community PSA previously, even new viewers. Uh, again, you know, I sincerely apologize that we are not able to go live on Facebook with it as we usually do. We uh, definitely anticipate the next time we won't have this. So I'll begin the Facebook Live by saying what we famously say, uh, social distancing has distanced us from one community to the next, but it should not distance us from the information that connects us. Oh, and this here is a platform for resources, information. The community PSA is a public service announcement where we are uh, invite public servants, uh, elected officials, community organizers, come on, advocates, uh, some great, amazing people doing, you know, such amazing work in the community and we bring them on the community PSA to share in some of the work that they're doing, um, to connect with the people where, they're, uh, where there's a need um, and there's an interest. So again, we thank you all who are watching this live uh, after the broadcast. Thank you for all the guests who are here. Um, thank you for being patient with us. Um, you know, just again, such amazing guests. Uh, we wanted to start with an announcement. Uh, I have a co-host. Let's get to the co-host real fast. My co-host, uh, Ms. Jennifer Baker, are you there? Yes, hello. Thank you. Honored to be here. Glad to be here. Glad to have you always, you know. Uh, how are you doing? You been all right? Yes, um, online teaching has been a challenge, but I'm really excited about this lineup tonight. Yeah, Dr. Dr. Baker is a professor at the College of Charleston. Uh, she's also uh, a member of My Communities Keeper Mentor Group. Uh, of course, the Community PSA is a My Community Keepers Group production. Yeah, and we're here at the studio. But I did have an announcement that I wanted to make um, uh, from the Community PSA. Uh, My Communities Keeper Mentor Group, we have, uh, let's get to it real quick. Something I think will uh, definitely be uh, what the people we have coming up. You will see this will be on my page. We will share this uh, throughout social media. We hope to get some great response on this. This is a uh, exclusive announcement. Uh, this is the first time that we're announcing this. It's called Basketball After Dark. We will be, my communities keep them at the group in association with the Neighborhood Association presidents and North Charleston Police Department are putting together a basketball after dark. Um, and we are looking for players, coaches, um, you know, uh, volunteers. We anticipate having this basketball after dark in uh, the springtime, April. We understand that COVID is uh, still here now, hopefully been not thinking that we would get to a sense of normalcy, but we would definitely take all necessary precautions to get this uh, basketball off the dark. We're looking for the ages of 12 to 16 unisex and also 17 plus. Um, we hope to get at least eight, 10 people per team. This flyer will be on my social media page. We will share this uh, flyer on other social networks. We will also have a billboard on I-26, ha, ha, ha. So that will be on I-26. If you see the flyer basketball after dark on I-26, know that that is actually uh, 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 going to, I think going to be a very, very great event um, for the kids, definitely for the kids. We always try to do all we can for the kids, to connect the kids to other kids and, you know, kind of teach them um, definitely how to 
you know, better relate with one another, uh, you know, creating these friendships and these bonds that we hope will last a lifetime. You know, we go through a lot in these communities, uh, especially in the communities that we anticipate this, uh, have this and we have Union Heights, Shakur, Cherokee, the Whalen, Akabee, among other neighborhoods, but those are the neighborhoods that we list on the uh, flyer. So again, basketball after dark, uh, my community's keeper mental group, uh, neighborhood association and North Charleston Police Department presentation. And with that, we will get to our lineup, our amazing lineup of great guests who do some amazing work in the community. Um, our first, our first guest tonight is Miss Lydia Cotton. How are you doing? Miss Lydia Cotton. She is, uh, first we say congratulations as well. Um, for those who don't know, she was recently awarded the uh, Community Justice Award that's order, um, of, awarded uh, by the CJCC, Charleston County Criminal Justice Coordinating Council. Um, the Community Justice Award is giving to uh, our community representatives who uh, display amazing work within the community and, uh, you know, bridge gaps from uh, the community to those resources within the uh, Charleston County Criminal Justice Coordinating Council. Congratulations on getting that award. I, I, I say it's well earned and it's well received. So uh, congratulations, Ms. Carton. Thank you so much. I am um, humble and proud. I'm a Latina proud tonight. I am in around some amazing people that, you know, Latinx, Latina, Hispanic, you know, we are, we're not all Latinx. Some of them are also like me and Latina. And it is time for us to really bring that unity we're going to achieve. I'm very excited. So I'm very, I will not forget the name of Tisha, Jocelyn, Carison, you just said the people that, that is going, Vicky is going to make me feel like I need to go to the next step to bring the Hispanic community united. So thank you for inviting me, kids. I understand. Uh, thank you. I'm, I'm, um, you know, you're definitely what I consider, the, I, I sometimes call you the face of the Latino community. Uh, you know, I understand from conversations that we've had that there are others, uh, many others who work with you um, you are the co-founder of an organization called Art Park. Uh, we definitely want to talk about Art Park. Um, when I found out about it, I was just like, wow, that is just amazing. Um, could you tell us some more about yeah. Art Park? So Art Park, born in North Charleston, uh, everything that I learned, the Hispanic community, when it comes to law enforcement, the grassroots, et cetera, I, I, everything is Art Park. One of the people that... Um, you know, the, it's here. One of the people that really joys uh, that I learned from in the past uh, is here tonight. So I'm very humble about, about seeing her. So the thing is the art part, the vision of art part is really start with the arts and go through the arts. But at the end, remember part is the, we are cooking some art. At the end, the idea is to unite the African American community. We're going to cook together some art in the future, and we're going to really invent the wheel. We're not going to just get the wheel that is already invented. Together, we are going to invent it because in reality is that up to now, with all due respect, it's not being done. In our part born with that illusion and that love and that um, reality that we are not engaged yet. We have to engage and we're going to start through the arts. For well, art doesn't mean only the painting or the theater. You no, know, art means to be creative, to be creating any sim single way. Like law enforcement, for us law enforcement is very important because of the fear factor of the grassroots community has. We have to knock that down. We believe that's a domino effect. Once we do that, people will come out freely and then unite with the rest. But not only that, 23 countries that are not talking to each other really need to speak up to each other as well. The Latino population, Hispanic, Latinx, we are totally different countries. We are not just one group. So, you know, I had to learn from Puerto Rico, I had to learn from Mexico, I had to learn from every country, the custom and the respect as well that from each other. So. 
for algo as a Latina, which my roots are African-American community, even though my skin is white, we, that's our base. That is our base. And we need to really bring that through and we need to speak about it. So that's the hope of our part. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just think it's just a great thing that you guys do with our part. I, I've been a witness to some of the work that you do. I look forward to the My Communities Keep a Mental Group working with you. In fact, I think we have another sort of announcement here because this is the PSA, right? Public Service Announcement. I uh, invited uh, Mrs. Cotton, Lydia Cotton, to be a mentor with My Communities Keep a Mental Group. Um, you know, uh, for the Hispanic community, we anticipate at My Communities Keep a Mental Group to, um, you know, find ourselves in situations where there may be a Latino who needs uh, mentoring. And we definitely want to do all that we can to serve the entire community. Um, and, and that includes the Latino community. And I felt like who better than Ms. Lydia Cotton to come aboard My Communities Keep a Mentor Group to be a mentor and a liaison for that, uh, for that efforts. Um, so I appreciate you and all that you do. Um, you know, uh, Dr. Baker, did you have anything for Mrs. Carton? Yeah, I mean, um, I'm just so impressed by your uh, um, efforts to reach people. And I know that must be challenging over, over COVID, but I was wondering, um, I've been hearing about your work about COVID, and I was just wondering if there's anything the community could do to to help you or any obstacles that are in the way to get the word out and get people safe and to get them treatment when needed? Well, as a, as a Latina, again, I don't want to let COVID, you know, back me down. So what we did, it was work in the community. We lost our community center. We, we built inside a community center with our own hands. We spent a lot of money. We lost it with, with our COVID. We said, okay, we let you go. So now we got to go to the street. And what we do is 35, 40 people, once out, twice a month, go different communities, and we walk and knock one door at a time. Last Saturday, we knocked more than 150 doors. We talk directly to the people, of course, with, you know, with the distancing, but we are very well engaged. Everyone in the city, the city didn't see us because we go to the different communities. People, well, they don't want to go. They don't think you know, people is living right there. So that's what we like to do. And, and sincerely, uh, right now we have an audience of 20,000 Latinos a month, sometimes more. We visit at least 500 homes every month. So yeah, this is going to be a project that we're going to go all the way. And, and, and I can't wait, we're going to the Africa. The one thing exciting is I can, honestly, this is the dream. I went to the Liberty, Liberty, uh, the Liberty uh, Hall, right? It's a, it's a little community in, over there in, in River Avenue, close that, right? From Montague. Yeah. And we. Yeah, Li Liberty Hill. Yeah, we went to a house to help out to clean the yard of one family and the door. We were like 15 people there. And then the people around us, first they were looking at us like, where they're coming from? You know, we're not from there, but we was helping all day. And. It was amazing. People start seeing the, sitting down. I start watching us and we made friends that day. So we are addicted to that. We're going to go back this month, Saturday the 6th, to go into the community, that same community to really keep helping. We can do so much with our hands. We're very good in construction. We're very good in things that we do with our hands. So that's what we're going to do. Very exciting moment for us. Reality you know, as long as we cover ourselves well, we follow the, the, the distances, we can do many things. I truly believe that. If Nothing people, gonna stop. I don't think anything will stop you. If people wanted to donate, where would they donate, um, you know, construction materials or funds or other resources? Yeah, we have a page, www.arpa.org. You can click there, people can donate. They can call me at 843-819-5760. And honestly, you know, we need materials. I thank you for saying that because we're going to do, do some benches for the parts. We were talking with Hanahan today about beautifying some areas. So uh, I love it. Thank you for helping us. Uh, thank you. We'll put the link underneath this. Yeah. Thank you again, uh, Lydia. Uh, you know, uh, I look forward to continuously working with you through the CJCC. 
Um, of course, with my community's keeper mentor group, um, you know, you and, and that's I just want to talk about that real quick. The CJCC, you are a community representative for the CJCC, correct? For so I was the first Latina five years ago, and you know, I took a break after two years, which I, my time ends, and I bring my friend and he took my position, and now I'm back again. Yes, five years. Never stopped the relationship. We never, you know, we're not a public person, but I honestly believe in relationship. That will never stop us. And, and that is that is why I from uh, Officer Joy, I, I forgot her last name, but that relationship is years in the making. So, you know, we believe in that. Yeah, definitely. Five years in CJCC. Good stuff, good stuff. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. It's a, it's a pleasure to always work with you. It's a pleasure to have you on uh, the community PSA. I look forward to every um, opportunity that we get to work together. Look forward to seeing you again, hopefully Saturday, right? You be good. You be safe. You can stay on, of course. If anybody guests here, um, I understand. I see other viewers have came on. Um, if you're wondering, uh, you know, I guess how this is working. Uh, usually we go live um, on Facebook. We are having technical difficulties. So this is a recording. We're recording this and we will play it back uh, at the conclusion of this community PSA on our uh, networks. Um, but those who are here uh, as guests invited, um, if there's anything that you want to ask, but others who are here as viewers, we ask that you continue to mute your mic. And even if you will turn your video off, your camera off, we will truly appreciate that so we can be able to distinguish the guests from those who are viewing. Um, but if there's anyone, I, I heard you call uh, Mr. Smith's name, uh, the new deputy. Yeah, I know yeah, she's very fond of you, as we all are. Um, she definitely gave you a lot of shots out, and you've definitely been a major contributor to so many of us, especially her. So she's definitely grateful for that. I don't know if you heard her. I did, and I thank you so much. Um, I appreciate our relationship. It's been, gosh, a long time. We've been working since I was a, a newbie out on the street, and she's definitely just been an asset to the community overall. So I truly appreciate the relationship that we've established over the years, and I look forward, even though I'm in a new role at a new location, to continuing our works and our efforts together. So I thank her. Good stuff. Good stuff. We're going to move forward uh, to our next guest. Um, just uh, for me, I shake it off a little bit. You know, some people who know me and my family see me do this and they kind of know what it is. I um, mean, uh, the next guest, we have a very, uh, you know, peculiar bond and, and a really great relationship. Um, Ms. Tisa, Tisa Wack, she is the uh, co founder of We Are Their Voices. Um, Tisa, you can, I'll let you go from there. Okay. Uh, I, it's, thank you, Keith, um, for allowing me to um, join. And I see some familiar faces and some unfamiliar faces, but all the same, um, I, I welcome each and every one of y'all. Hopefully meet some new people for some new connections to some things that we're doing in the community. Um, as Keith said, I am the I am the co-founder of a, a nonprofit that was founded in um, some of us our client are called um, We Are Their Voices. And the nonprofit was started um, after I lost my son and my only child, Tyrell Miles, to gun violence in 2014, excuse me, 2015. And my co-founder, Chandra Bryant, she lost her son in 2014 to gun violence in the same exact neighborhood um, about a block away from each other. Um, our lives kind of intertwined because we both had our only children. We both had grandchildren from our, our sons. And you know they both were um, murdered um, at the age of um, 20, um, 21 and 23. So very, very new um, and young men whose lives were um, lost. Um, you know, Chandra reached out to me um, um, during the time, um, it was November 30th that I lost my son and she lost her son in December of the year before. So she knew what I was going through, um, suffering through holidays and just the grief of losing a, um, a child. Um, so we, we always used to talk in, about, you know, being the voices of our sons. And one day it just hit us, you know, because there was a lot of things that we wish we had in our community, like um, more 
information about victim advocates and what crime victims do for um, victims of crimes, um, the court system, you know, bond hearings, trials, things like that. And we didn't have a resource, you know, other than our um, victim advocates, which we all know um, in the space that we all work in, in that victim advocates are overwhelmed. They got thousands and thousands of cases and they can't one-on-one -on -one with each person that they connect with. So me and Chandra decided that we wanted to start our own nonprofit to support, you know, our mission um, to bring awareness to the effects of gun violence and um, be the voice of our sons and others who were murdered or injured due to um, senseless gun violence and to be able to provide access and outlets and opportunities. Um, from there, um, you know, somehow I ran across Keith, um, I think through his cousin, through his cousin and um, we connected and, you know, most of you know his story about his son and, you know, we, we've been able to work together a lot, but, you know, we're the voices of, is really there to be able to support victims of um, gun violence. Um, you know, I've been doing this maybe, maybe two years after my son died because I, I had to find some purpose out of his death. I felt as though if I sat home each and every day, um, essentially feeling sorry for myself and, and grieving the loss of my son, I knew that I had to turn that grief into action and, and be an advocate for him and so many others who parents, um, the fathers and the uh, mothers who've lost their children that may not have the strength to talk or speak on behalf of their children. Um, it's hard. Um, so that was a part of how We The Voices got started, you know. Um, a lot of times we get questions about, you know, you know, what can we do um, as a community to end gun violence? A lot of what Keith is doing and a lot of what our organization, um, do, they bring awareness to it, you know, not just the emotions, but, you know, the legal aspects of, you know, what's going on in the state house, you know, what, you know, gun um, laws are coming up to play. Um, I actually ended up joining my local Moms Demand Action chapter um, for gun sense um, in the United States and, and became this deputy chapter leader at um, the organization for South Carolina. But the advice that I give to most parents and most community members are, what can you do? Um, improve parental involvement, you know, mentorship, which is what Keith does um, a lot of. Um, communication among young adults and communities of the impact. Um, you want to teach your, your youth character traits um, to have a lasting effect on them because a lot of it is that some kids don't have the connections and the family involvement and it may create um, situations where they think that's the only choice but to pull a gun. Um, and then, of course, one of the last things I always tell people is advocacy. I mean, there's so many ways to get involved and be an advocate for our youth. A lot of the kids don't have anybody that has a voice for them. They may be coming from um, mom, parents on a home where parents aren't home a lot because they have to work. I mean, we all know that, you know, living in the United States, sometimes uh, the living wage is not what, you know, a really living wage is. And in Charleston and some of them in Dutchester County and Berkeley County communities, you know, we see the skyrocketing in the housing and how much it costs. And you have parents working three and four jobs just to be able to make ends meet. And if they have children, those children are sometimes often left home alone, not with a bad intention from the parents, but it's what they have to do. And then maybe they're influenced by some others in the communities that may not be looking out for their best interests. So, you know, those are, those are kind of things that, you know, gravitated me towards Keith because we were kind of on the same mission. I've worked with um, Joyce, um, Captain, you know, Scott, Major Smith a, a lot and, and we <laughs> connected in so many ways. Um, and, and, yeah, and, I, and Lydia, I think I've met you before. I don't think that um, we had a one-on-one -on -one before, but um, I think um, I wrote the telephone number down. I'll definitely be yes. calling you to can make some connections. But, you know, another thing that our organization does, we offer um, a support group. We meet monthly. Um, and what we found that was a lot of parents are um, members of the community that, that suffered from gun violence. They didn't have a connection to just to talk to someone. Um, one of me and Keith's dear friends, Dr. Zakivia um, Lewis Kendricks, she um, facilitates our group on a monthly basis. And um, she provides us that support we need to get to the next level of grief. Because one thing I like about her is she, she doesn't discount our feelings, but she allows us an opportunity and teachings to 
um, us to figure out how do we maneuver this new sense of life that we have? Um, how do we um, cope with our grieving on a daily basis, no matter if it's been two months, two years, or 10 years? You know, the pain is still there when you lose a loved one, and especially when you lose a child, because you, you nurtured that child and you expect to, um, you expect them to bury you, not for your children to bury um, you to bury your children. So um, those are some of the things that we are doing. Um, we also um, sponsor our youth um, athletic programs. So Keith, I'm glad um, to hear about your public service announcement. Um, I see some opportunities there for us. Um, we um, participate in community with law enforcement. Um, and engage our partners in this in this fight for gun violence. Um, we actually offer a scholarship to high school students right now in Dorchester District 2 and 4. Um, but the scholarship is not just for kids or college bound. We, we extend that to kids who maybe want to go to trade school, whether it be barbering, air, air conditioning, um, those type of things. Because every kid is not college bound, we have to recognize that. And they shouldn't not get the opportunity for those type of um, scholarships. Um, we do speaking engagements to, to um, kind of amplify the stories of our loved ones. Um, we support victims um, through hearings and trials. If um, family wants us to come with them, um, kind of navigate through that, we're here to support them. Um, we partner with elementary schools for our backpack um, buddy program. Um, and we do, um, this year we didn't do it because there was no prom, but we do a, a Tux for Prom sponsorship where we sponsor young men to go to prom. Um, a lot of times we look out for the young ladies, but sometimes we forget about the guys. And a lot of, um, the guys need attention too, because we want to divert them and make them know that they, they are um, definitely connected to the community. Um, I think um, that's it I have, Keith. I um, mean, I think I have, I got some upcoming events I can share with you guys because we partner with a lot of people with, throughout the community. Um, one particular organization called Taking Back Our Village, I've been collaborating with them for before my son died. Um, a lot of the members of that um, community support group, um, we started when the um, murders in Myrtle Beach happened in um, 2014. I think it was, yeah, 2014. And, at that time, my son was alive, Chandra's son was alive, and one of our other co-founders, her nephew, was alive. Um, and we were laying our voice to her because we saw a need um, to bring awareness then, not knowing that the um, same year Chandra would lose her son, I'd lose my son the following year. And another one of our co-founders would lose her, her nephew that year. Three years in a row, we suffered losses through the violence for the very thing that we came together to um, improve in our communities. Um, but what we're doing is we're hosting a um, cold case form and actually working with Charleston County Sheriff's Office on um, February the 9th at um, 7 p.m. And I, I did share that um, information with Keith and he's gonna drop it in the chat, but it's gonna be via Zoom at 7 p.m. on that day. So you um, can share the information and you can look for Taking Back Our Villages on Facebook page. You can find information on that. Um, and what we decided is to amplify some of those cold cases. So those families may can get some closure on the cases that's been gone unsolved. Um, and like I said, we have um, we had a voices grief support uh, meeting, and that those times are 6:30 um, on the next few Wednesdays of the month. Um, and we have a Zoom ID. Keith is going to drop that in the link too for anybody who may be watching the recording. And then on February, the, uh, the week of February 1st through the 2nd is actually National Gun Violence Survivors Week. And I'm collaborating with Moms Demand Action for a statewide virtual event. And that's going to be on the 6th, February the 6th at 2 p.m. And, um, you know, we want you to join um, South Carolina and other volunteers as we highlight the resilience of South Carolina gun um, violence survivors and share and uplift their stories. Um, we will also want to get a better understanding of um, gun violence in our state and provide information to increase engagement of supporters in our work towards gun, um, to end gun violence. And like I said, as um, I stated, we got the scholarship and that deadline, we're going to, all we want kids to do is write an essay about the effects of gun violence and, and how their future selves will help to end it. And my contact information, if anybody's interested in what we're doing and how to get involved is um, you can reach us at wearethevoices.com and our telephone number is 
um, and I just want to say again, thank you, Keith, for allowing me to um, talk about what we're doing and also being a voice for my son, Tyrell, and so many others who've lost their lives um, due to senseless gun violence. Thank you. Thank you, Tisa. Um, you know, uh, I think we we, had, we talked about that uh, event and we haven't put a title on it. Uh, we uh in October, we have uh, my community's keeper mental group has sponsored a day to be raw, remember where and well when Tisa came and participated in that, and we thought about being able to take it to other areas that's been really hit with gun violence. Um, so we talked. I talked to Tisa about it. We haven't titled it that, but we anticipate doing something possibly in the summer vote area around the springtime in April, a gun violence awareness event. Uh, my community's keeper in conjunction with We Are Their Voices. We will definitely keep you updated on that. Um, just amazing stuff that she does. You know, we definitely work hand in hand. Um, when she reached out to me, I was just, uh, you know, I was happy, definitely, to, uh, you know, to know that, you know, she was she's doing all that she's doing, her and her co-founder, uh, Ms. Bryant, uh, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a hell of a situation, um, excuse my language, but uh, for me, it's, I don't know, it's the same way for her, it's just, it's not easy being an advocate for gun violence when you're on this side. Um, what I have a tendency of saying is that, you know, we need more people not like us to help in fighting this. Um, you know, we need more supporters who are not gun violence survivors. Uh, you know, we need more participants in this fight that, uh, you know, who haven't, so that they won't, you know, you know, you know, have this feeling that we have, you know, and um, again, I thank you, Tisa, for, uh, you know, all that work that you do, because I think it's amazing work that we all your voices do. Um, Dr. Vickers, is there anything that you wanted to ask uh, Mrs. Mrs. Swat? Uh, no, I mean, I'm just so um, humbled by the list of things that are achieved by the nonprofit. We are their voices. I mean, the you know, when you see the, the list of things um, that are done, you, it's, it's just overwhelming. So I'm just thinking the best thing people could do is spread awareness and encourage engagement with, with what we are, their voices are, is already doing. Is that, is that right? Like um, you have a beautiful Facebook page, you have a beautiful web page. <laughs> it just seems like you're ready. Everybody should know this now. Everybody should be looking yeah. at getting their information. I mean, you're an information clearinghouse an organizer. So, I mean, um, I had never thought of what a burden it is for a, a victim, someone who suffered a tragic loss to also be pushing awareness. I, I never thought of it that way. I mean, I, I kind of thought, oh, there are experts in this issue. But now from what you and Keith just said, I'm realizing that people who aren't victims really should be, be pushing because it's, it's almost it's too much to ask for, for, for a person to, um, to both be completely expert in this issue and um, and to be the one agitating for attention. So that helps me to know to know to to try and get the word out about what you're doing. And I just thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And just one thing, you know, just I want the viewers just to know that you know the support group is there, and there's many people who may know someone who suffered. And what we find the most part is that people don't know who to reach out to. Um, and if we can be a resource to them, because Dr. Z is amazing, she meets with us as a group, but she also will meet with them one-on-one, -on -one because we recognize that sometimes a group setting might not work for people, and we want to be able to offer both. So, you know, if there's anybody in the community that may need it, we've suffered a lot of gun violence loss over the years, and especially this in the um, past recent months, and, and those people may feel like they don't have anyone to talk to and no one who can connect or relate to them, but there is somebody and we're the voice that. Um, so whatever we can do, and if I have to sacrifice anything of mine in order to help someone else navigate to it, because I realize that everyone is not in the, at the point that I am and able to advocate on the behalf of their loved one. So if I can be the voice of not just my son, but others, I am willing to do that. And my, I will definitely feel as though my son loves Life was not taken in vain. It had purpose and had meaning behind it. So again, I thank you, Keith. I appreciate it. Thank you, Tisa. Always, uh, we are, 
we tied at the hip, mama. I'm here for you uh, just as much as you are here for me and Mrs. Bryant, that organization, and all the great work that they do. You know, you know. Uh, what can I say? Um, if there anybody who wants to say a word or share something, ask a question to Mrs. Swack. Uh, you can feel free to do so. Uh, if not, we definitely will go on to the next guest. Uh, always near and dear to my heart, man. I'm telling you, um, that's some good stuff that they do. So uh, we're going to definitely drop the information. Uh, I think, uh, Dr. Vick, I sent you her, uh, her the information that she sent me. If you get a chance, could you please put it in the chat? Uh, you can see I sent yeah. it to you, uh, what she sent me, all sure. the full information. If you could, I truly appreciate it. Yes, yes. The next, next we have uh, Mrs. Engels, Mrs. Vicky Engels, the Charleston Promise neighborhood. Uh, I've met Mrs. Engels uh, on the travels, on the highways and byways, uh, doing community work. Um, I've heard about the Charleston Promise neighborhood and always wondered, you know, you know, you know what's up? You know, I always see her, you know, and I talked to her a couple of times, had to go look it up, and I said, wow. I said, this is amazing. I said, this is what we need. And I mean, the thing that got me the most about the Charleston Promise neighborhood, I'll be honest, you know, I'm, I'm biased, you know, you, you, you know, you have a tendency of, of meddling around my neighborhood. You know, I'm from Acabe and you work in that area a lot. Um, Mary Ford, which is my old elementary school, you know, some brewers on here are from that area. Um, so I just, you know, I appreciate all the work you're doing. And you can definitely uh, continue to pull us in and some of the, the stuff that Charleston Promise Neighborhood is doing. It is a pleasure to have you here, Ms. Engels. Thank you so very much. Thank you, thank you. Can you hear me okay, everybody? Good, just yes. double checking. My, my, audio, my audio can be a little strange sometimes. So thank you for having me. I was just uh, thinking about um, what you all are saying about some of the things that are sometimes lacking in our communities, you know, creating connections for students, parental involvement, um, helping students find their voice, having safe places for children to be in the afternoon uh, when school ends at 2.30. Those are just some really great examples, frankly, of what Charleston Promise Neighborhood has done for 10 years. Um, we're a 10-year-old organization going into our 11th year. Um, I have been with the organization for 10 years. We support four schools. Uh, North Charleston schools include Shakora and Mary Ford. And then down on the peninsula, we have always supported Sanders Clyde and James Simmons. And this is a partnership that started, again, um, probably 12 years ago with the Charleston County School District, the city of Charleston, North Charleston, and the county, uh, when a contingent of people went up to Harlem to visit the Harlem Children's Zone in New York. And if you're not familiar with the Harlem Children's Zone, they're an incredible organization for community development, revitalization, parent engagement. Um, the students that are in their schools are, are soaring in the world. Um, and obviously we have aspirations for our kids too. We know our kids have the ability to be high achievers. Um, oftentimes we don't have the resources in our families to provide access to opportunities. And that's really what Charleston Promise Neighborhood was founded on, was the idea that all kids have the potential to achieve. And so some of the things that we've done over the years, um, we've had expanded learning time programs, that, which is basically after school programs which have been a safe place for kids to be. We, we had um, some really robust programs at Shakora, Mary Ford and Sanders Clyde. Obviously with COVID, uh, we couldn't host those kinds of after school programs like we've done in the last few years. When we did have them, they were great. The kids got to learn. Um, they had, they had uh, certified teachers that provided academic supports. They had a meal every day. They also had the experiences that that middle class kids get, you know, music lessons, dance lessons, African drumming, maritime society, coming and teaching kids how to build boats in the harbor, um, you know, entrepreneurial skills. So that was a really great program that ran for a few years. It's coming back. Uh, we have about 25 to 50 kids in each of our programs this year in January, um, which is a much smaller number than we've had in years past. Um, one of the programs I'm very uh, excited about that we've always had with um, our partnership with MUSC is our school-based health program. Um, that is just the idea that kids need access to health care. And what a better place for kids to access care than during the school day when they're at school. Uh, you know, kids have asthma. Kids have all kinds of stuff to get into. Uh, you know, respiratory issues, dermatology issues, um, 
behavioral health challenges. Um, so we've always for a decade now taken care of kids with uh, a provider team from MUSC. Uh, it's either a pediatrician or a nurse practitioner. Um, and we have telehealth. So with access to telehealth, the kids can um, even be at home sick and do virtual visits. Um, we can even have the medicine delivered to the parents' home. Uh, whatever we need to make sure the kids can be healthy learners is our goal. Um, we're very, we have a, a large um, focus this year on parent engagement and parent involvement, which was mentioned earlier. Uh, we know our parents are the best teachers for our kids. Uh, we, we've always had some very successful parent engagement events. You know, the old days when at six o'clock you'd be able to sit at the t day table at dinner with your parents and talk about what happened. You know, those days are over. Kids don't get that kind of experience with families anymore. So we used to do some great family nights uh, with Boeing and Cummins and the Ports Authority, teaching kids, um, you know, robotics and, and kind of little like 20 minute lessons they could do with their parents. And we'd have a little uh, parent PTA meeting in that time frame, and we'd also have a dinner from Jim and Dix. So it was a great way for parents to come together with their siblings and their um, extended family. Uh, I know some of the Mary Ford families who bring nine and 10, 11, 12 family members strong to those events. Um, this year has been tough though. This school year, without question, you know, all the things I'm talking about, we couldn't do. Uh, we try to do a, um, our virtual aquarium night. We used to have 500 parents and kids come to the aquarium from 5 to 7 p.m. on a beautiful spring day, close the aquarium down, give everybody free access. Can't do that. We did it virtually. It, it doesn't feel the same. It's not the same. There's no way you can pretend. Um, but we're, we're doing what we can. Uh, we're, we're supporting our families. We're listening to what our parents and our parent advocates in our schools are looking for. A lot of the things are stabilizing families right now. Um, there was a lot of, it continues to be a lot of need for uh, rent and utility support. Uh, we raised some money from a, a, a funder who gave us some funding to support some emergency assistance over the summer before some of those other programs kicked in. Um, our principals, hardworking leaders, you know, they don't, they have to do what they can with the budgets they're given. So they oftentimes rely on business partners to find other resources to provide what they need in our schools. So we've, we've raised money. We've, we brought second teachers into the classroom. We've added mental health counselors to the schools. Uh, we've added other partners, uh, communities and schools, reading partners, um, and we have a very robust volunteer program. Uh, we've, in the past, we've had 50 to 75 volunteers come into the schools, you know, hosting day of caring projects in the neighborhood, in the schools, building outdoor classrooms, um, career nights, um, partnering with um, you know, we, we even went to uh, I think Cummins one time and we collected, I think, a thousand books and brought them to Mary Ford. And then the Cummins team actually built uh, portable bookshelves that we could give to all the little kids because an important thing is for children to have their own library. And a lot of kids don't have their own bookcase. And so having that pride of ownership of having your own bookcase, um, th there's just a range of things that we've done over the years and I can go on and on. Uh, but it just, I think what you're hearing and what I'm talking about is really the fact that we pivot really well. Uh, we partner really well. We work with so many partners. Um, you know, understanding what what Keith's organization is doing is a, is a is a very great step for us, because what he's offering um, the boys program and the girls program and and some of these PSA programs, um, we would love to model this type of panel conversation, and we have done these panel conversations with our parents. You know, they wanted information on Origin SC and Palmetto Cap and Low Country Food Bank and Palmetto Goodwill and how to access insurance and we brought a panel like this um, to a parent information session back in December. So we really just try to listen uh, and learn from what our parents are asking for through our parent advocates. And uh, through our community engagement council, we have neighborhood associations, um, representatives, we've got community members, we've got Michael Brown, we've got, we got all kinds of good folks on that, in that group that are listening and helping us understand you know, how we can support our community. Um, so that's us in a nutshell. I uh, am very happy to be here, happy to answer any questions you may have. Um, 
oftentimes right now people are asking how can we help given the fact that we can't go into the school buildings or not allowed in the buildings as volunteers and the biggest thing i can say is just contact us um, you know figure out what it is that you have to offer um, you know we, we work with a lot of people who are doing supply drives hygiene kits basic need supports um, you name it you know we, we try to do parent incentives you know when a parent comes in and does a supports our, our parent engagement nights. We want to do the, the gift card raffles, right? Just like you guys do. Um, really small things, but they mean a lot. Uh, we're doing a family exercise night uh, in a week and we'll invite you all to come because we're going to be doing a little freeze dance with uh, one of our dance instructors. Uh, so the kids will have a chance to do, get, get, get to move with their families. So it should be fun. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you guys, <laughs> like you're working very hard. <laughs> Are there any obstacles or things? I mean, maybe it's lack of awareness of um, all the needs that you're addressing or I mean, are there any are there are there any obstacles to you getting the work done you want to get done that we could help with? Well, I think I think the biggest thing is um, really just understanding what you know we really try to learn from all these different community partners and figure out how to bring them into the schools in in the best way possible because i i, I think with the mental health supports and tisa and your organization i mean there was a tragedy at, in the mary ford community i think two summers ago i think the, uh, a group of children were at home and uh, there was a death a little kindergartner passed um she had graduated from kindergarten a week before at mary ford you know, and I think, you know, just uh, what I hear from parents is they don't know how to connect to resources and how we can help each other, um, help our families know that these resources are available to them. Um, we're looking at creating a virtual kind of parent resource center space um, that we can kind of bring all this information together uh, because it's, it's, it's very fragmented. You know, it's hard. We've got Two one one and trotting out of the way and great resources all over the place, but it, it still feels hard for our parents to find what they need. Uh, mental health support comes up a lot and how to access mental health supports. So I think the challenge is how can we all work together to provide this information and connection? And I don't have the answer. It's just more of these, I think, um, and making these more accessible to people. Uh, and, and being real, really open. I think what you all offer is just an uh, amazing space. And I, I, I wanna really just stay connected to you all so we can learn from each other. Good stuff. Um, yeah, we talked recently, um, uh, sat down and had a conversation, say that we would definitely try to figure it out. Uh, I think uh, it'd be a great opportunity. I love what um, Ms. Engels and the Charleston Promise neighborhood are doing um, in the community. And, and that's just really one of the reasons why we started the community PSA to be able to get these, uh, you know, these resources and make the connections to the communities and the neighborhoods and to the people that need them that may not necessarily know that there are things out there available for them that will help them um, get around the corner or get over that hump Wednesday or, you know, um, whether it's mental health or education and, um, and gun violence and even, you know, having law enforcement and, you know, continuing to script in that relationship with through community engagement. But the community PSA is definitely, um, you know, going to be here to help my communities keep a mental group. Of course, as you talked about the program, I think we want to uh, probably make an announcement about that at the end, definitely make an announcement about the, end, uh, the open enrollment at the end about the, the mentor program that we're about to do. But, um, you know, I think it was just like, uh, you know, it's one of those things, you know, I, I was just so helpful to, to run across you and meet you and, and find out all the things that you were doing and being able to be in the position to help, you know, facilitate, contribute, you know what I mean? And I definitely look forward to it. Um, Ms. Ms. Dr. do you have any more questions for Ms. Engel? No, I feel like it's another case where we just need to get the word out for people who want to contribute or help. I mean, it is funny how often you run into people who kind of dream up um, ways to get involved when they already exist. <laughs> you know, I mean, mm -hmm. a, there's that lack of information as well, but um, we'll, tr we'll try and really share the pages and, and get the word out. Thank you. Yeah. 
and even more, you know, sharing the page is definitely something we're going to do, but I'm definitely looking forward to every opportunity that we can to work together, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I, hey, listen, I'm a alma mater, Mar Mary Ford is my school. I was in the talent show at Mary Ford. I done walked across <laughs> that stage. I uh, listen, I love that school. Man. I love it with a, with a passion, you know what I mean? So, listen, anything that we can do at my community, just keep a mental group to get the word out and spread it. We are here for you. Trust and believe that we are here. So I thank you so much for all that you do. And I look forward to every opportunity. Thank you for coming on the community PSA. Trust, we'll be here again. Um, I, I anticipate having you on again. Um, we'll we figure that out in, in the future. Again, thank you again. We will have the information for the community uh, of uh, uh, Charleston Promise neighborhood um, in the link. Uh, we'll definitely have information so that you can reach, uh, you know, you know the resources that they provide. You know, again, be able to find, give support and spread the word to those. You know, if it's not you, somebody who who, who needs it in your community, um, Charleston Promise neighborhood is definitely there for them. So again, thank you, Ms. Engels, for coming on. I appreciate it. I look forward to talking thank to you. you again soon. Thank you. Next up, we got, uh, I think it's a, it's, I see it says uh, Joyce Smith on it, but it says <laughs> Deputy. I hear Tisa, this, Tisa, listen, Tisa, Tisa, you get, you got, come on, Tisa, you, you, you know what I'm saying? You talk about right, I, I think I gave her like every title in the world <laughs> yeah. minutes ago, but you know, she's a, my main superhero, so. <laughs> listen, I, um, uh, uh, listen, congratulations is an okay. order. We all want to give a big congratulations to a newly appointed Chief Deputy Joyce Smith. Uh, congratulations. For those who don't know, she was uh, previously a major from North Charleston Police Department. Um, you know what I'm saying? Listen, I, 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 I got to go back. And, and, and I want to go back to this this text, right? So I was like, so I, I the newly elected uh, uh, sheriff, uh, Ms. Graziano, I was like, okay, I want, I've had people from North Charleston on. I've had um, no, uh, Mount, Pleasant, Mount Pleasant Police Department on. I've had the city of Charleston Police Department, but I never had anybody from the sheriff's department, right? So I asked her, you know, I said, do you think you can help me, you know, in getting somebody on from the sheriff's office? She said, absolutely. I think we can make that happen. How about Chief Deputy Joy Smith? I said, hold up. Quick question. Is there two Joy Smith in local law enforcement? She said, no. I said, uh-oh. I was so happy. I was so happy. I was so happy. Um, I'm, I, you know, I, I, we've sat and talked. Um, you know, I, I definitely, you know, I love all the work that you do. I, I love how you engage in the community and you uh, are definitely very transparent and you are, I think, you know, you're very intentional in trying to make sure that we, uh, the community engagement is, is you know, that, that bridge is uh, attacked and it has an understanding of that the law enforcement is here to, you know, protect and serve, you know, uh, and you do it to, you know, you know, you do it. To, I, I mean, you do it at such a high volume, man. I just appreciate you. I tell you, that. I don't tell you that enough. You know, I do check on you, but I don't tell you that enough that I appreciate you and all the work that you've done. And we look forward to you know you being there, and, and we definitely want to hear some some you know, about how the new gig you know fits you, and different things that um you know you you know you got planned for us because I know you got some stuff planned. Uh, so welcome, um, Chief Deputy Joy Smith. Welcome. Thank you, guys. Oh, my gosh. My heart is so full. I did not know that God was going to have these type of major plans for me. So I'm super excited um, that my territory has been expanded and able to come on board over here at Charleston County Sheriff's Office with the new administration, um, Sheriff Graziano. Uh, you know, that was a hard decision because I, I had I had my hands and everything in North Charleston. You know, I just love um, the community work that I had the latitude to do over there, uh, whether it be the technology or a recap program, rebuilding every community around peace, um, my women in blue mentorship program, uh, community first land trust for affordable housing. And just in some way, like everything that I've done working with you and my brother's keeper and the PSA, has touched almost every person on this panel. You know, I had mentees um, through Charleston Promise at Shakur Elementary, and I work with Ms. Hayward sometimes when they were doing the STEM um, things over at Mary Ford Elementary. I remember speaking at the graduation where we had adults getting their GED and kids that were 
in the program over there. And it was just a lot of amazing things that were going on um, in North Charleston. And there still are, and that will always be home to me. But um, I have a new stage now, and I am excited about the vision that Sheriff Graziano and the leadership that she has brought in um, is looking forward to expanding over here at Charleston County. Um, so this is only day 18 for me, and it's been a busy <laughs> three weeks. And so, you know, and, and it was heartwarming to kind of hear that um, Tisa mentioned earlier that people want to know more about the court system and how bond hearings work. And those are things that I don't know a lot about. And I am learning so much more about every day. So I'm taking notes. And y'all know this, that's not usually me. Usually I'm begging y'all, please come speak. Please come out to my event. We have this going on. So I'm, I'm making notes. So those will be some of the things that we'll be touching on. And it was good to hear that we already have a cold case form plan. So you know I will be there. Um, I have the new community group over here at Charleston County Sheriff's Office. So we're in the process, obviously, of transitioning. Um, some of the things that we're focusing on is our leadership, um, culture changes, reorganizing um, the structure a little bit, making sure that our goals and objectives are shaped around the needs of the citizens in the county of Charleston and not just necessarily the needs of the police department. So, you know, that's really always important to me. So we still kind of broke those down into three categories. Um, our public safety vision, which will be very inclusive with community events. Um, having a human resource vision, which one of the top priorities there will be recruiting. Um, we definitely need to grow um, the numbers here at the sheriff's office as well as over at the detention center. And we all know how important it is to make sure that we have a diverse and a inclusive um, workforce that's very reflective of our very own citizens that we represent. Um, so we'll be working with the county um, diversity and inclusion person here and we hope to in the near future maybe hire somebody to bring in to the sheriff's office that will also be focusing on that as well. Um, of course our fiscal resource vision, you know there's a lot of money in the county and we got to make sure that we are fiscally responsible for those funds that are coming in and that those funds are also used to represent the needs of what the community is looking for in community programs, many of which you guys have already mentioned right here. So I think that law enforcement, unfortunately, a lot of times people look at the what's already known, you know, deterring crime and apprehending criminals. We know that that's the two things that we're going to naturally do in, in, in our work. But what people don't expect us to do is to be out and to be involved in the community events that we've been involved in for many, many years, but we don't necessarily always advertise or get the public, um, I guess, notices about what we do out in the community. Um, you guys know I coached at our COPS athletic program back at North Charleston. Um, we hope to be extending some of those same things and maybe we'll be able to kind of get with you, Keith, with the basketball after dark. Um, and gun violence is a, definitely something that we have to touch on. I've got already some things lined up that I'm thinking about partnering with um, when it comes to touching on gun violence. I'm still kind of twirling through all of our numbers and seeing where, where that need is the greatest, where we're having some of the most um, violent areas um, in the county so that we can make sure that we concentrate all of our efforts in those right particular communities. Um, the other thing is just using our resources to the best of our ability. You know, we have a lot of unincorporated areas um, like Mount Pleasant, you have the Snowden area. Um, you got some of the islands that don't have a lot of the access that we have right here in North Charleston or the city of Charleston. So we just want to make sure that we extend those same opportunities to some of those challenged and underserved communities that don't necessarily see it as much um, out there. Uh, so we're looking to do some of those things. Um, Sheriff Graziano, we, we've got a little challenge going right now as far as recruiting. <laughs> so, you know, I'm, I'm out there definitely trying to make sure that anybody that's interested. So we're building um, relationships in our um, local colleges, technical schools, um, places like that, because there's a lot of opportunities for working in the county, just not only in law enforcement, the detention center, um, the school district, 
facilities, management, finance, there's just a lot of areas that people may not necessarily think about those types of careers that exist working for a municipality or county government. So we want to make sure that we we share as much information as we can um, with the citizens. Um, I met today, we have a new general counsel um, that's on board here. Her name is Chandra Scott. Um, some of you may know her. And we talked about just how we can work on improving um, our social media presence. Um, so we'll be looking. Um, so if you uh, can follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. We'll be looking to keep a lot of information flowing out through those routes, um, probably a, a little bit more than what you used to. Uh, we have a social media person that's dedicated um, to doing that outside of our regular uh, public information officer. So I'm just kind of super excited. Uh, we're partnering um, with MUSC and, and a new program they have that's going to be working on um, gun violence. Some of y'all may have heard um, that they're going to be doing some work with that. So we'll have some representation from Charleston County Sheriff's Office as well there. Um, we're looking at, you know, a lot of times and, and we can't be in denial um, as law enforcement. Um, people always say, well, what does the gang problem look like in Charleston? And we always tend to say, oh, well, that's a Richland County problem or that's up in Greenville. But the true reality is it's trying to get really organized right here in Charleston County. You know, when, when you look at the data and you look at what's going on in, in certain areas and certain communities, um, they're, they're loosely, um, <clears throat> loosely formulated, but they're trying to get structure. And that's where we kind of need to interject. And we need to make sure that the community is aware of that and that they know what to look for and that they become partners in helping us make sure that they don't get formulated um, and bring more strife and crime to the communities. Um, so there's a lot, we have a whole lot going on over here at Charleston County. Um, just the, the restructuring and the transition is, is really big. I'm excited about some of the goals that we're writing. Um, I'm hoping um, the Facebook, I'm sorry, I'm looking at a, at a name, uh, the Facebook group at Chief Deputy Smith. So Charleston County Sheriff's Office is the current, um, Facebook group. And I can never deny um, one of my old initiatives that I had at North Charleston Police Department, which was RECAP, uh, R-E-C-A-P, Rebuilding Every Community Around Peace. Um, Lydia mentioned uh, when she was talking about Art Park, how important it was to actually um, have boots on the ground and get out and walk in the communities. And we did that um, with that recap program. And we were able to just get out and talk to our citizens and see what their needs are and kind of break down those barriers. Um, and let them see how human we were behind a badge. And we did that in partnership with a lot of our community um, advocates. Uh, a lot of our nonprofit groups would come out and support us. Um, I know Chris Singleton has come out and walked with us on several occasions. And how we choose our communities is we look at the calls for service um, in those particular communities. And then we go and see um, why there are so many calls for service in those communities. And unfortunately, a lot of times it was very saddening to hear, like from house to house to house, how many um, homes had been affected by violence in those communities. And a lot of the families you saw were still grieving. Um, I heard Ms. Ingalls mention mental health. I've been dealing with mental health issues every single day since I've been here at Charleston County Sheriff's Office, and it is a beast. You know, we have an in-house person that helps with um, people that are coming in off the street, but we're definitely looking to make sure that um, we can put as much information out there as possible to help people deal with mental illness. Unfortunately, because of the pandemic, because of unemployment, um, it's probably gonna be a growing challenge for us on all levels, whether it be law enforcement, you know, education, the healthcare system, um, you know, grieving mothers that have already lost kids and they're trying to figure out how to take care of the kids that they still have that are living. Um, so it's going to take all of us collectively working together um, to try to find some united front to get the resources out to the, the individuals and the communities. And we're definitely willing to be a partner and also to be a platform to make sure that we get that information out um, collectively to our citizens. Because when we're stronger in our communities, we're better together and we thrive together. Um, so we're just looking forward to doing that. Um, as of right now, I don't have like a particular 
um, program that I would like to push out. But I hope that Keith will be so kind to invite me back in the near future um, once we got some things solidified on the table. And we'll definitely make sure that we get that information out to all of my all of the partners. Um, if you have my old cell phone number, I've transferred that number over to Charleston County. So it is still a valid number. So you can definitely reach me that way. And I think everybody on um, that are uh, here tonight, they have my email address um, for this particular um, platform that we're on here tonight. And you're more than welcome to reach out to me this way as well. But um, I'm really excited. Um, Sheriff Graziano has some um, amazing um, ideas about things she wanted to do. We've been collectively talking about the criminal justice coordinating counter CJCC. I'm learning a whole lot more about that and how it can work for us better in law enforcement. I think there's a small amount of information out there, but it's not out there to the masses and especially um, to be able like the Tri-County Stabilization Center, you know, where the officers can take individuals to that location for minor offenses versus you know, putting them in Charleston County Jail or some detention facility. Um, so we're hoping to be able to get more of that information out to law enforcement and all other future initiatives that are coming. Uh, we're excited about the new Department of Juvenile Justice um, Center that's being built in Charleston County. Um, Sheriff has made some amazing changes in, in just in the structure and the architect of that particular building to make sure that it's more more like a school campus and less like a jail, you know, um, to keep things moving, to keep resources there, to make it family friendly, um, to, to help those youth that if they end up in that facility, that it is an experience and not a lifetime sentence of what's to come in their future. Um, so we're really excited about some of the things that are happening with that as well. Um, so I'm just happy to be here. You know, another um, part of my journey um, and this is the part that I love, and y'all know this, this is, this is my lane. Um, but, you know, in the beginning, there's a, just a lot structurally that we're working on and reorganizing. Um, I've joined a community over here of amazing um, officers, men and women. We've had a rough week. If you've heard, you know, we lost a deputy to a suicide. Um, they had his um, viewing tonight, and that's been a, ver a very difficult um, thing to come in into, um, but they've been very strong and we've been um, kind of holding our own in the situation and we're just looking forward to, you know, moving forward and doing some really good things and they're excited about the changes. You know, it's been 32 years under um, a leadership that left a very great legacy and, and work through some amazing challenges over the last few decades. And we're just hoping that we can um, do just as good things and continue to make Charleston County Sheriff's Office just a great entity and a, a good place to work. So um, I'm just happy to be here and excited about the future. And also Black History Month is coming up, you guys. So um, any opportunities that we have, you know, to, to um, just kind of put some of our commanders and officers out on the forefront, with speaking engagements and just being um, visual and humanizing that badge, we look forward to having the opportunity to do that. Um, so I'm just excited about future things over here at, at the um, law enforcement complex. The law enforcement, the law enforcement complex. I love how that sounds. <laughs> I mean, that's you, you heard that 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 right there in itself. You know, it, you know because um, you know language means something. You know, it has it does it does carry weight. The law enforcement complex is this. You know, that's how you begin it. You know, transformation is just a beautiful thing. Um, again, I'm, you know, I say I'm ecstatic for you to be over there. I know the platform is bigger, but you're, you know, you're up for the task, more than up for the task. You know, um, they're going to miss you there, but trust and believe me, you're not far away. I know that you definitely are going to be in the community doing more and more. I see your name on the CJCC uh, roster. And I was like, okay, you know, I'm a, also a community rep for the CJCC. So um, look forward to you coming there and, uh, you know, getting in that room and there's a lot of good information, people in there and a lot of good connections and resources and, you know, it's things that I know that you would definitely take advantage of to be able to bring back. In fact, I still mentor somebody that you reached out to me about um, in that family. So, you know, I, I as well have definitely um, benefited from your presence, you know, in law enforcement and also in the community. 
So we look forward to continuously to working together. In fact, uh, I think while I talk about that at the end, we do have another guest real quick. But uh, uh, that uh, basketball at the dark, uh, you know, make sure we get that information over there and try to, you know, you know, we definitely would love to get that involvement. I know that if you would on, you know, no child and I definitely would be involved. So I will always extend every, every, any opportunity that we get at the community, my community's keep a mentor group to the sheriff's office. Oh, Michael, oh, you got to say it one more time. I got to get that. I, I love that. That was just amazing. How did you say it again? You said it's the law, law enforcement, enforcement complex. complex. Yes. At least. Law enforcement yeah. complex. And you know, I have a lot of great mentees still, you know, over at North Tawson and they love to do community work. So um, anything that you have, I'll definitely reach out to, to, to those young ladies as well. And I hope to be able to start doing some mentoring over on this side. So, you know, with the mentorship, we try to do it in-house with um, female deputies, but we also try to do mentoring outside, um, usually through foster care facilities or youth homes. Um, places like Jenkins Institute, um, CYDC, those types of locations. Um, but we'll we'll do one on one as well. So you know, if you got somebody that, um, and especially in the schools in Charleston County, we don't have um, deputies in the elementary schools, but we do have them in the high schools, um, and they will be doing mm -hmm. a lot of more community work um, this year in the next coming year. So um, those are some of the changes that we're looking forward to. Baker, do you have anything for uh, new no, chief I, deputy? No, I was to think the last time that um, hearing from law enforcement made me excited for the future, you know, and, and hopeful. That was a very um, exciting set of things to hear. Um, I just, the idea that uh, if the sheriff's department becomes more transparent, I mean, I know uh, many things are going on, but that social problems might be identified that others can help with or that we're implicated in. Um, I'm just thinking of the mental health issues that, you know, are hidden in the jail and, um, um, you know, the, pr the problems of juvenile justice, even the problems in the, in the system. It just seems like there could be a lot of synergy there. So as the social media presence gets bigger with this transparent sheriff's department, it's, it seems uh, the community and citizens, we, we have an obligation and response to Try and address the problems that are not caused by law enforcement <laughs> that mm -hmm. law enforcement identifies and has to deal with. Anyway, I'm, I'm, thank you and I'm yeah. very grateful for that talk. You're welcome. We're excited, um, especially to be, able, we have a new director over at the jail as well. And, you know, we know that change is not going to come overnight, but that's what we do long term and strategic planning for. So we're taking our time to try to assess and identify the problems um, that we're looking at here at the law enforcement complex, as well as the detention center. And we're listening to the employees, you know, they're, they're the boots on the ground. Um, so it's been a little difficult with COVID. We know COVID has kind of put um, a hamper on a lot of things, but um, we're listening. So we're, we're trying to be transparent on the inside as well as on the outside. So just look to, to see some great things coming. Wow, yeah. that's good to hear. Thank you, great stuff. Uh, again, thank you for being here on the Community PSA. You are always welcome. Uh, in fact, I, I, you know, even though that's out here, next month we have a Black History edition of the Community PSA. Um, you know, uh, I think we can have a conversation about how they can be a contribution coming from, uh, you know, Sheriff's Office. If so, and we also have a couple of other events coming up that I definitely you know, hope to be able to get you on. Um, so uh, I, I have another announcement. I'll wait till after it's over, uh, closer to the end. But I thank you again for coming on. I thank you for your service. Um, you know, and, uh, and just just so happy for you to be there on this such a bigger platform, knowing that you, you, you know what I'm saying, you are worth it uh, and you're definitely up for the task. Again, I you know, look forward to seeing, you, you know, as we travel on these highways and byways doing the community work that we do and, you know, so. Thank you again, Ms. Smith. Thank you so very much. Congratulations again. Thank all you. Right. I appreciate um, y'all. God bless Anybody you. have? All right. Um, so we want to, you know, we get kind of late and we, we want to record, but uh, I thank everybody for their patience. Um, you know, some of the viewers stayed on. Uh, we let them in. Uh, um, uh, you know, and it's been, yeah, that technical difficulty, but we see, you see how we have still been able to move along. You know, rather smoothly, um, giving out some great information. So hopefully, when those who watch this again, 
uh, you still feel the same energy uh, from as if it was a Facebook Live because the information is definitely profitable and helpful to all. So I asked our last guest, the last but not least, I, I told her a day, I said, she's a fan favorite. Um, I was I, I met her like a couple of months ago. She came and she did an event and, and people were texting me like, man, what, you know, what's up with that? You know, of course, I am previously incarcerated. I serve in excess of 19 years in the Department of Correction. Um, you know, so uh, I do have a lot of friendships um, still, uh, you know, from that um, that that part of my life, people who are still back there and even some who are home. So this next young lady has been very popular. Um, she is very popular. She does some great work. Her name is Jocelyn James. Um, she's a representative of National Expungement Week, South Carolina. Jocelyn James, hello. Hi, Keith. How are you? Hi, everyone. <laughs> Um, thank you for being here. Uh, thank you so much for being here. In fact, uh, I, I let her talk definitely about uh, her organization, but she's 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 um, on here from Japan. Aren't you in Japan or Tokyo? <laughs> no, not today. <laughs> oh, well, <I'm>... yes. <laughs> so, uh, so tell us about uh, National Expungement Week, South Carolina. If you may. Yes. Um, so again, I'm Jocelyn. Hi, everyone. Um, I laugh at Keith when he says, you know, you're going to be the fan favorite um, because of what we do. Um, again, on behalf of National Expungement Week, uh, we're called National Expungement Week. However, as of last year, we've expanded our project to be not just for a week of a week of action and awareness to promote what expungement or record stealing is or more so record clearing. Um, we've expanded to year round services now. Um, because we've discovered that this is a dire need in the community. Um, so what we do, uh, we provide resources that empowers communities to adapt, sustain, survive, create in the pursuit of equity. We also help reduce harms done specifically by the war on drugs that has affected approximately 77 million people. And I have to throw that in there because this year is the 50th year anniversary for Nixon's war on drugs, which we know which has affected black and brown communities more than other communities. Um, so we provide healing services through hosting expungement, pardon, record stealing events because every state doesn't have expungement. Every state doesn't have record stealing. Here in South Carolina, we have expungement. Every state has the ability to apply for pardon, even the DC area. They aren't a state, they're, they're a district. Um, and that's how it got started in the DC area. But again, we host expungement, record clearing, um, and pardon clinics throughout various cities throughout the United States. Um, South Carolina hosted their first or first event during kickoff week last September. Um, it was very slow. Um, I got more calls from North Carolina. That's how I inherited also not just my home state. Yes, I am born in Richland County. I'm from Columbia, but I inherited North Carolina as well as now Georgia. Um, we're gonna get, go ahead and get those two states up and running. Um, but yeah, again, we host uh, pardon and expungement clinics throughout the uh, throughout the nation um, that also not just provide legal relief, meaning yes, we pay for it. Uh, apply for the uh, pardon expungement if you qualify for both, we pay for it. If you have court fees, we take care of it. And that's something that we are putting on the books for 2021 because that's something that I identified in doing this work. PTI, pretrial intervention programs. That's a fee. If you don't have the money to get the charge removed from your record and you've gone through or you need to go through PTI, you can't pay that money. And those, you know, those programs, they range. We cover that fee. Driver's license fees, we cover that too. Um, so anything that touches that charge, we cover it. And when we say we cover the legal fees, we also cover the wraparound services. So every person on this call, including you, Sheriff, some way, somehow, you touch someone with a charge. Tisa, on the other side of this is, you're a mom who's experienced gun violence through losing your son. Think about what healing can be provided for a mom who loses her son because her son was the shooter. That's a wraparound service. Art pot, that's a wraparound service. You, you have anger issues or your therapist or you saw, you saw mental counseling and they need you to have a creative outlet, I got somebody for you to go see. So that's what we're here for. We're here to help that individual in every way possible, not just from mental health, but through housing, food insecurity, um, 
if they need help with immigration, because that's something that we experience, veterans who come to us, anything, we help them with that. Um, because what we've identified is there are over 48,000 barriers a person has against them when they have a charge on their record. In the state of South Carolina, I think it's like 171. One of them being, if you want to apply for a licensure, I'm a licensed massage therapist by day. I couldn't apply for my licensure because if I had a charge on my record, I couldn't do it. If you want to be, a, you want to go to nursing school. I have young, the, the part that really gets me right now is the 18, 19, from the 18 to 21 year olds who are in college but can't go back to college because guess what? They either lost their Pell Grant or some form of their scholarship because of a mistake that they made. And now they have to live with that. They can't go back to school because of that one thing that they did over the summer. So another thing that we seek to do is partner with, you know, universities in terms of second chance universities to, to, work, to work with one another to see how can we get these kids back in school. That's another reason why fundraising this year is gonna be very important, especially for me and our organization, because we wanna get people back in school. We wanna we want give people their lives back because you're not truly free if you have a charge on your record. My mother went through the process. And when I told her that I stepped into this role, she said, Jocelyn, I just wish that there was something like this when I was going through the process because I spent thousands of dollars just to have a criminal domestic violence charge removed from my record. And that came from her and my father getting into it. So yes, um, I'm very honored to be here. I'm very thankful and grateful. Um, some, we have some things coming up. Uh, Speaking of Black history, uh, we're doing a Let History Be Your History series um, starting in Columbia, South Carolina, February 13th. Um, we're going to host a, an expungement and parting workshop there. And then we're going to move to Charleston. We'll be in Charleston February 20th, again, 12 to 3 p.m. We'll be at 1418 Remount Road. Remount Road, Road, Central Mixtapes, uh, Central Station, the Mixtape Headquarters. Shout out to Uni and shout out to the Black Liberation Fund who we're all partnering with over there at Community uh, University. Um, please come out and, and we're going to have our last event in Orangeburg, February 27th. And again, this is a whole series of just record clearing and just making sure that we give people their freedom back. Because again, like we said, let your history be history because you can't live a free life if you have a charge on your record. Mm. Fan favorite. I, I, listen, she dropped dropped the mic. Like, listen, you know, uh, Doctor Bickey, I, you have I something. Do, I do have a, a question, if you don't mind. It's kind of a philosophical question, but I know you're the one to ask. So sometimes it seems like there's a lot of cleaning up of of the disasters caused by law and policy. Like it's a matter of justice. It's an unjust system, or you know, these arrests are. I mean, we still we still have these racially discriminatory arrests for marijuana possession. I mean, sometimes when I see that, I can't, I can't believe it's true. I, right. I mean, you know, they can survey the public too. It's not it's not like you know only a few people think this is wrong. It's it's like a consensus. So, it do you have an do you have a solution for how helping to fix problems that are caused by bad policy or bad legacies or or what have you? Does that ever work against itself? Do you know what I mean? I know what you mean. Um, I'm gonna tell you like I told my brother. My brother and I had a discussion about, he mentioned Joe Biden's, uh, President, excuse me, President Biden's, um, he's cracking down on private prisons. And he said to me, private prisons equal legal slavery. I said, hold on here. Private prisons and even public prisons, no, those are the plantations. It's the policies and the lawmakers, that's the legal slavery. How do we erase that? You get rid of the laws. How do you get rid of laws? You get rid of the lawmaker. So when we get that, that in our head that that's a process and we can get into these communities to help them understand, because again, that's something else that's on the books for this year too, because I didn't share this part. Um, I stepped into a national role. Uh, I just got this role as of last year. Again, we kicked off in September, had our first event 
our second event in Columbia, our third event December in Charleston, in North Charleston. So I just jumped into this in June and now I'm director of operations and programs because I've been hitting it hard ever since. And I've identified some things. And just being here born and raised in the South, you know, I'm the only one in my family born and raised from Columbia, South Carolina. Everybody else is from Southern Virginia. The, where they're from is called the last Confederate capital of the South. So I understand and I've seen some things and understand these systems. I've been lived in the suburbs and I've lived in the hood. So I have some knowledge and some, some, some I have some wisdom that I can share because I've had my feet in both. I've had my hands in both pots before. So having the challenge and the hurdle has been getting people to understand and getting our citizen, citizens in our communities to understand, yes, you're tuned into a president, but you have someone that's at the county, the city, and the state that governs your backyard. If you don't like it, change who they are. Because if you don't like what's been going on the past 20 years, that same legislator who has been there for 20 years, that's your issue. Go to him. Well, they're not going to listen. You know why they're not going to listen? Because it's not enough of you. They work for us. It's called we the people, and we are the people. So that's, that's one of the solutions, and that's a main solution um, that I've identified by being in this space in terms of how to reverse those, those curses, pretty much, because that's exactly what it is. That's so helpful. So helpful. Um, again, um, you know, I appreciate you and all your work that you're doing. Um, I just want to reiterate, I kind of uh, say, like, you know, all of these services when it comes to expungements and pardon, you know, we look at all the fees. I remember when I came home, oh my God, I, I mean, my license was suspended. I had a drug charge. I was, uh, you know, some people can go, uh, I'm an executive director for SC4, uh, I'm on an executive board member for SC4CJR, and I did an interview. You can go on the website and you can see it, but we talked about, you know, me originally having 29 years for drug trafficking. Um, and, and when you get to talk about how much drugs that I had, it amounted to four packs of sugars, you know what I'm saying? And I, I received 29 years in the Department of Correction. And because of that drug charge, the law here says that my license is immediately suspended. Granted, I did 15 years, in excess of 15 years in the Department of Correction. And I still came home with a suspended driver's license and had to pay fines on top of fines in order to get my driver's license back. So it was an uphill climb and an uphill battle um, for me and, um, and, 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 and many others I know just like myself. So um, I am very appreciative of Mrs. James uh, and, and the work that she does, National Expungement Week. I just think that we need somebody like you exactly um, in this position with your passion um, and, and determination to get this message out here, you know, not just based on what they give you on pieces of paper, but what you know and what you research beyond, um, you know, just the position that you hold. Because that's more important than me, um, because I think people can resonate with you even more and even better based on that energy that you bring and all the passion and there's so many different, um, you know, intangibles that you bring to it. So, again, <clears throat> uh, February 20th, uh, the uh, Central Station, I was there, uh, was it September? We were there. December. Um, I understand. Yeah, it was COVID, you know, of course, COVID is still... Uh, you know, alive and well, we were definitely, you know, following all our restrictions. It was definitely, a, I, I think it was a very successful event, you know, even in spite of COVID. Um, we had a great turnout. People were just, you know, I think it was a great operation and where it was set up and designed. I was so impressed. And she was walking around. I was like, well, I need to talk to you. She was just, she was just going so fast. And I was like, I, I need to get you on the show. And I need, I, you know, and, you know, finally we were able to, you know, meet, sit, and stop for a second. And even the Black Liberation Fund, um, young lady from that organization, we were able to talk and figure out how we can get the word out and get more people out to uh, that event, February 20th. Um, <clears throat> you put the link in, yeah, so she has the link. Um, you put the link inside the chat. Uh, I am like, what? Just glad to meet you. We look forward to working with you. My community's keeper mentioned we have a prison reentry program that we hope to uh, launch, um, you know, as we continue to get it, you know, uh, in a better shape. I think I like to say we want to make sure that we have all our T's crossing our I's uh, uh, dotted. And, you know, we definitely look to partner with you with that, figure out how we can, 
you know, work together and helping these guys coming out of the Department of Corrections. And even before they come from the Department of Corrections, I'll be definitely honored um, to be able to get you on that. If there's anybody who have a question for Mrs. James, I definitely I do have a quick question. How can she get this information out to the local communities? Because, um, you know, everyone's not on the Facebook platform or on social media because this information is imperative, especially for those who've been incarcerated and trying to find a job or, you know, just trying to make a difference in their life. Just getting this information to them. Um, I did share a copy of the flyer um, in the chat, and I'll also share it with Keith and Jennifer. I'll put it in the email so they can distribute it on their channels as well. Um, I would love to get everyone else's contact information that's on here. You guys are a wraparound service. Again, even you, Deputy, you're a wraparound service. If we could talk to the people, there's a, there, there's a connection here. There's bridging a gap. They may not want to see y'all in person in uniform, but if y'all can have an ear to the streets to be like, look, this is how we can help our people. Because like you said, I appreciate you for saying what you said, deputy. I really, really do. Because I've had a friend who was negatively affected in Charleston County. He was arrested for pills that weren't his. He was driving someone else's car, got pulled over for speeding. The cop told him to get out. He's like, on what charge? She told him to get out. She had a Confederate flag on her, her clipboard. He saw it. So she got him out the car, ran his stuff. She said, those aren't your pills. He didn't have a prescription because it wasn't his car. So when you said what you said about there are changes to be made, but it's going to take time. Thank you for saying that because you see that. You see it and you know it. And I can tell that you want to help. Because these citizens, they don't want to see y'all, but they will talk to you. They will talk to you a little bit, but there's a gap there. And we want to help bridge that gap and get our communities back because our communities are gone. We got back. So thank you. So again, I'll share. Um, I put it in the chat and I'll share it again with Keith so you, everyone could share it on their channels. Because again, we, we want to get the word out and let people know that this is a service that is offered to them free of charge. So and what I do with that flyer, I will make actual physical copies. Um, and I will take it in certain areas, barbershops, for those, again, I, I, I understand I was, uh, the question, for those who are not on social media, um, or not on that platform, I will take the liberty, because I definitely know this, there's a sense of urgent people that I'll take some physical copies and fit in certain areas, um, barbershops, and um, even um, in my neighborhood where we're from, Akabe, I would definitely do that. Um, you know, you soon as next my week. parents' door, so they can- I will do that. I will definitely do that uh, for one day next week. I'll make sure one goes inside the store in our community. So uh, any other questions for her? I know we probably, but we may have a lot. We don't want to, you know, bombard her. We don't want to run her off. We're trying to get her to come back as much as we possibly can. <laughs> but if you have any more questions, we, uh, we'll definitely take at least one more question if you do have one for Ms. James. I, I got a question. I just want to know, um, so you gave the dates for um, the common year. As you get the dates, will, will we be able to go to the website to see if they, how they come up? Because I love this idea to wrap around services because a lot of the stuff that you talked about is what's causing a lot of these crimes to happen. Because once they get that charge and they cannot change their minds to do something better, because people just don't wake up and say, I want to be bad. Or I want to kill somebody. Right. There's stuff that, that led to it. And I think some of these services and help is definitely the answer to it, but I appreciate it. Lots of good information. Oh, no problem. And I'll put uh, my social media, our social media um, in the chat box as well. Um, and again, I'm gonna get y'all's contact so we can all stay in touch and partner together because there is, there's an opportunity here. So thank you. Just wanna say that Vicky, Tisha, Jocelyn, you know, we're gonna talk soon. Deputy Chief, we talk all the time. We're gonna be working together. I don't have to mention that, but we need to talk, ladies, because I want to take your information to the grassroots Hispanic community big time. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mrs. James. I look forward to seeing you uh, next month um, at Central Station and uh, continuing this uh, conversation and this relationship, continue to build this relationship so that we can take back our communities, help as much brothers and sisters as we can. Um, again, thank you for coming and joining us on the Community PSA. Um, Ms. James is our last guest of the night. Uh, uh, Representative Dendalvis, uh, he can't make it tied up in meetings. Um, so uh, we definitely will extend an invitation for him to come in our future events. 
Um, one last announcement from my community's Keep Momentum group. Uh, I think this is big. Uh, this is amazing. We have uh, a photo shoot this weekend. No, everybody is not invited to the photo shoot, but the photo shoot is for the launching of our Boys Will Be Boys and Girls World Mentoring Program in February, and we will be having a Meet the Mentors also in February. We haven't put a date on that Meet the Mentors and the launching of that program. I will definitely have uh, the dates in the first week of February. February, I go live. I put it on my social media platform. I will definitely find every opportunity and way to spread the word from one community to the next because my community's Keep a Mental Group is definitely a community based organization and we look to be able to be contributions as much neighbor as we can. We also have a Money Smart program for kids and adults. Uh, it is called Tentatively Money Smart. It is something that we have partnered with Pinnacle Financial Partners to uh, bring to our mentor group. Um, we also have a critical thinking course um, that we will be hoping to launch, uh, if not February, definitely March. Um, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, my community's keepermentorgroup.com is the website. Uh, you know, we are just honored and privileged to be in this space and be able to be, uh, you know, be a help. So, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, the expungement work, you know, it's definitely important stuff. Again, um, is there any more Dr. Baker, any last closing words? Um, just, I'm overwhelmed by the goodness of everybody here. I'm inspired and um, feel a little bit bad in comparison. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm just grateful. I'm really going to work hard to get the word out. And um, I hope everyone who watches will look for, you know, sources of connection and, and support and really um, get involved in the ways that were suggested that might be positive. And stuff. Again, this is a this is uh, definitely a recording. We will be sharing this on my community's Keep It Mental Group Facebook page. We will also share it on my personal page. I think Dr. Baker will share it on his page. We will definitely uh, tag everybody, every guest that's here in the in, in the recording, um, and hopefully be able to still get it out as if we were uh, on Facebook Live. I apologize again for that uh, malfunction. Uh, you know, so but we still were. I think we're able to. You know. It, you know, the job done. I, I am privileged and honored to be in this space. I thank you for all the guests that have came here um, today and lending your time. We did stay over way longer than I anticipated, but it was well, well worth it. I look forward to seeing you all again on the highways and byways on this journey called community work. Um, again, what we say here at the, my, at the community PSA, social distancing has distanced us from one community to the next, but it should not distance us from the community from the information that connects us. It should not distance us from the information that connects us. Until we meet again on the community PSA and abroad from one community to the next, I am the founder of my community's Keep a Mental Group. And I say good night, peace and be safe. God bless everybody. Okay, Wilkes. <laughs>